Greetings. My name is Nero and welcome back to Do or Die, Brand is the Dark Revenant. PSP version emulated. I've got some bad news. Uh, I've got this little thing with Outer City which I use for recording and it tends to do this nice thing where it changes the recording device by itself, it just randomly changes it like that. Just doesn't really give a shit, it just does that. And I forget to check it out. I forget to check which device it's using, so it's really my fault, it's not Outer City's fault, it's just very bothersome when it does that. So I should have checked that out, and this is post commentary, pretty much. I lost my there was no commentary at all for this episode. No live commentary because I I screwed up. Speaking about issues. So we got this floor where you can't rest, and I haven't really used the rest feature that much. I've only used it when I have been really clumsy <laughs> with controls and accidentally pressed it. This point you can see how slowly strength sl uh, strength grows from hitting these zombie guys. So kind of decided I should not attack them at all unless they are in the way of fighting other enemies. That's kind of the whole point they are there to hit you from one side while you are focusing on another enemy and in that situation you should either reposition yourself so you can fight them both or kill the other and then fight the other. This guy takes little damage from your sword but a lot from magic. I don't even remember, remember anymore what I was supposed to say in this point or what I was saying while I was trying to make live commentary. I have to make a little note to myself to always check my recording devices before I start recording things. So I don't end up with lost data. Shop here. You can finally sell all this stuff that's been got each. Completely useless. It's still money. Might as well carry it around as long as there's room for it. I forgot about that poison, so 72 and... Magic is really expensive, don't really do much with it. So I just ended up buying some health potions. I forgot to talk with her. I haven't talked with NPCs this is much here. This is that one interesting thing in this episode. So this kind of confirms or gives the theory that uh, time kind of slows, time slows down in these ruins. So. These people who live here might be, might have been here since thousand years ago or so. They've been living here for that long. They haven't aged since time is slow here. Which is possible. It's a fantasy setting, so. And it's a pretty good expl explanation for why there are mercants in ruins like this. And I kind of like that they are messing with their gameplay and story. I didn't really get out that much from the story perspective of this game since the original version I played was in Japanese and I didn't know any Japanese. I used machine translation, pretty much Google translation and to kind of figure out roughly what people are saying and then when I needed specifics I used jisu.org which is a kanji dictionary useful for people trying to learn Japanese. Jisho, it's J-I-S-H-O dot org. Check that out if you are learning Japanese. Mm. 
chances are that if you are learning, you already know and don't really need me to tell you. But I only used, tried to translate like out of little verbal hints about puzzles and such, since those were very necessary. Otherwise, now that that's wrapped up, it's, this episode might not be too interesting, really. Like, honestly. There's not any exciting moments here, so I'm not really going to expect anyone to watch this. But there's this one very interesting teleport puzzle in the next floor, so that's something you might want to look at if you care about that stuff. And if you are having a hard time with puzzles like that, I've got a handy trick for making it easier. But I think most people know how to use the map markings in this game, so it's not very unusual. But if you don't know about it, it's not good. And if you are watching this to see Della moments here, there's going to be some in the next floor. I'm, I'm just going to be honest here and say that when the point of a playthrough is to have these exciting close to death moments and there's an episode where they are known, so I don't really... I'm just going to recommend that you skip this, but if there's another reason for watching this, then go ahead and watch. At least you have all these moments of me <laughs> mixing up the controls all the time. Decided that I didn't really need to fight that guy. Then I decided that I'll check this place later. In. Uh, what's the word? I forgot the word, but thinking about it later. I should have checked that place right now, since it's not going to lead anywhere, but there are useful items there. All in due time, so... I wasn't really expecting to be able to do a video this weekend, since I'm going away later today, but... Since I had some time, I said that I'll make a brand video. I kind of wanted to play Hot Steel 2, but since I got into this kind of good moment in the story I thought I'd want to play further because if I play for two hours and end up in some exciting situation it's gonna bother me until I get back home and yeah I decided to leave it the rest for now I'm not really in a rush to play it since I'm very good at avoiding spoilers these days at least in my own opinion Check the rest of this floor For the heck of it I have two friends who are playing it Some buddies Buddies are people who I kind of want to be friends with but I don't feel like I'm familiar enough with them to call them friends Buddies who are much later in the game or have already beaten it since I probably have far less free time on my hands so I might as well not feel like I should be able to catch up to those guys. And I realized that you can run forward towards these guys and uh, block the first attack they will do at that point and then hit them. Decided to check this place again. Uh, after all, stuttering. And we got the new shield. Defense three, defense one. Defense three is better. I'm trying to. You got to see these moments where I try to block manually from far away, and I end up jumping forward. That's not going to be good later on when. The magic enemies are much, much more dangerous. So, magic resist will grow. 
This might be a pretty good place to farm magic resistance actually since you can drink constantly. Although you can trust here, I think so. It's going to be slower. But I'm not going to farm any magic resistance since that's going to make the game much easier. The only thing I'm do to make the game easier for myself is health potions. So that's how you are normally meant to play the game. Really, really lame when live commentary breaks or disappears or never happened at all since it means I have to use twice the time I spent on recording just to make it this video like have my video as sets and then I have to encode the video once since I'm using fraps. There are other tools out there that put out much smaller file sizes but I just like fraps like puts out good quality as long as it works. At some point I might learn that circle is actually the block button. And after encoding it, I have to edit it. There's not much, ed much editing here, really. Just add one little, like, fade in to the beginning so it looks nice. Not that anyone watches those fade ins, but it looks nice, so I like to put it there. Right at the beginning of the video. And go to the video listening to the audio commentary audio make sure there's no unnecessary voice there like if I shift my leg a bit while sitting here it's going to make a noise this microphone it really catches everything if there's someone in the hallway or the stairway making all those noise I can kind of try and make remove that and stuff like coughing you have no idea I've been going like a crazy bitch on this but that sounded kind of nasty sorry like coughing like a dog who has been fed cinnamon like a beach dog dogs are bitches you know female dogs decided to drink up here check out that one room i didn't check out but i edit my coughing out so you won't hear it it kind of adds this little quality if you are going to do youtube always kind of when you got commentary, go through the commentary audio, remove all the shit that doesn't have to be there. It's just going to be much more pleasant to listen to when uh, your audience doesn't have to listen to your body noises. That sounds like the, just like a lightsaber, it's exactly the same. It's just... You can hear it right. It's, it's like a lightsaber. <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars might be a fun thing to talk about here. I like Star Wars. I don't like Star Wars these days. I didn't really like the seventh episode. I think it had good implementation, but it used the wrong ideas. Like it was majority of the movie was just reusing all the ideas and I know episode 6 kind of reused all the ideas from episode 4 but it's had it had a resolution that looks kind of this ordeal so that's what made it great for me like I don't give a shit about Ewoks I don't give a shit about second Death Star but looks like character are coming to an end like that it's it's what makes episode 6 so great for me Episode 7 was kinda eh. I've seen all of this before. I... Episode 8 it can kinda either flop or 
become a great thing in many ways. Like, if it becomes Empire Strikes Back number two, then it's going to be lame. If they take the cheap route and just start mowing down big characters, like, just for the sake of shock value, it's going to be fucking lame. Here I am, marking the floor, realizing gray is the color of the walls, so decide to use white instead. You yeah, mark those teleportation spots, it's going to be much easier moving forward. Like, uh, the game does show on the floor where there's a teleportation spot, but the color coding makes it easier to know where you are going since shows you where you will teleport and you might not remember all of them so that's why it's very useful to mark them all up it's also good to mark these doors so you know there's a door there who is left first I'm gonna actually sell those rings next time. And I also don't like, 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 like. If anyone knows this series, Jedi Knight series, game series, that stuff is like my freaking childhood. And it's also one of the best damn things I've ever played. I still love those games. It's not pure nostalgia since a lot of them I didn't get to play until I was much older. And Jedi Outcast is the best damn shit ever. It's the best Jedi, it's the best Star Wars game for me. <clears throat> Some people like Dark Forces 2 more. I think it's a no matter of like preference, those two games are a bit different in certain ways, so. By the way, I have no idea what the talisman is supposed to do. Maybe one day I'll figure it out. But they decanonized Jedi Knight and then there's this Rogue One movie that kind of takes the setting from Dark Forces 1 and kind of twists, twists it around like it has this character called Jin El so it's sort of very similar to Chan Oz which is Kyle's partner in the mercenary business and then what we got There's some guy who might be Karl Katan. And it just feels like some kind of cheap Chinese knockoff of everything. It's, I don't like that at all. Then there's this big crew of characters. I, I'm not against diversity and not a racist, but it's always like when you've got a crew of every freaking possible nationality, biologically like, biological race. That's something you. Biological race is a thing. I don't really care about races, but this appearance is a thing. And then you got this war crew. They're like, it gives me this feeling that they're kind of like trying to feed me this like diversity, just for the sake of it. Like I, I know I've seen people. I can see Asians and black people all the freaking time when I go outside. I don't really need your movie to make me like more... I, I don't know what's the point of it. Like it's okay to have these characters but it's just they always stuff this small crew full of every possible nationality and it's just weird for me. It's, it's okay but it's also comes off as something that that's made like let's go this first and try to think up what, how to explain this.
we have to jump right after her since we need to use this turbo anyway. Della is kinda hilarious since she actually thinks RS is luring her into the traps, but she's pretty much just walk them in the, on her own. Anyway, like, like I've got to use stereotypes, not racial stereotypes, but people stereotypes. Like, uh, let's take um, a person who doesn't really give a fuck about race. That would be me. I don't really care about race. I'm going to say that I'm more afraid of culture. Like, if there's a person from... I'm going to admit that if I, on the streets, I meet a black person and they are talking in a language I don't recognize, I'm a bit wary of them. I kind of pay more attention to them than more people. Like, uh, let me explain first this. I'm a Martial artists. I used to do martial arts. Martial arts and some martial arts martial artists can probably relate to this thing where you you look at every person you meet. Every person coming at the street towards you, you're going to look at them a bit to see if they are potential attackers. Like no one's really going to attack you on the street, but you kind of get grow this attitude. This little, like, it's like a reflex, really, that you grow in martial arts. I don't know if everyone gets this, but that's what I do. And, like, when you've got people like this who are unusual, you kind of look at them like they might be more of a threat than everyone else. And it's just because they are from a different culture, or they are from... They're just different, so they are a bit suspicious. But I know that they are not going to do anything to me. Most likely, but I just, it's a, it's an instinct, it's a human instinct to be a little bit afraid of the unknown, because you don't know what the unknown things will do, but after a little moment you're going to know that, yeah, it's just a person, they're not going to do anything, but you will pay a little bit of attention to those people, and it's a culture thing, now if there's a black person who's going to speak fluent in uh, Finnish, I'm a Finn, if they speak fluent Finnish, I'm not could pay any attention to them more than any other person since they have integrated themselves to my culture so I know they are most likely not a threat and it's not like I consider them a threat if they are from a different culture but it's an instinct it's hard to I hope people get this That's... oh yeah like it's not racism, in my opinion, it's just being wary of people of other, like, being wary of the unknown, it's an instinct, you can't really help it. It's, I think real racism is when you start actively fighting culture that you might find dangerous. I think it's also very healthy for a nation to hold true to their own culture, like, not let other cultures take over. Like, I don't think that's important. Some people might call me racist over that, but I think in Finland we should be Finnish. And in England people should be English. In Iran people should be Iron, Iranian, Ironish. I don't know what that is. In Australia people should be Australian. Like, cultures, like cultural diversity doesn't work in my opinion. There's a point where things are so different that they just don't mix together. But I smell like amount of separate culture in a society, if it can integrate to some extent, it can work. I think it can work, but not large scale. When we go large scale, we've got a shitstorm. That's dangerous. I didn't think we should do that. Like, you can keep telling everyone to be more tolerant. You can keep telling everyone to be less afraid of things, but that's not going to work because fear Fear is an emotion, you can't control an emotion that easily. Especially the more people you have who are afraid, they're going to be more dangerous. So it's better for everyone to 
not mix things up too much. This went pretty political, but I know someone's going to think I'm a racist shit, but really. When we are talking about politics, all liberals who are very liberal will call me a conservative and all very conservative people will call me a liberal. So I have no idea what I am. I forgot about that teleport there. So I... You probably saw that I was very confused for a moment until I accidentally stepped on it while looking for a way forward. And now we got a way forward. Yeah, like I, I've got this theory that people are, at least these days, people are far less afraid of skin color. And they are more worried about where that person of a different skin color comes from, and what are his intentions. And it can apply to... Like... Some people are going to tear their ass, but there are also places in the world where white people are... Oppressed. Or... Discriminated. It might sound weird to you, but that's that's how it is. I think I haven't been to Japan, but the impression I got is that if you are white, they are not going to be very welcoming of you. But if you can speak fluent Japanese, it's going to make it a lot easier for people to like people will be more welcoming of you when you speak Japanese because they kind of get this impression that you are not that foreign when you can speak their language. And so, language is one step forward in that. And same goes for black people in Japan, like, people are probably even less welcoming of those in Japan than they are of white people. As I said, fear of the unknown is it's a very natural thing. Not something we should use an excuse to be assholes, but it's something we should keep in mind when we try to consider what is evil and what isn't. <coughs> There's some limit to what people can do to make the world a better place, because when you try to be too good to people, they will, there will be a point where people will... Now I know this. I'm fucking stupid. There's like a whole row of other claw thingies right there, so this game has just as many... Like, claw options as the computer versions. So yeah. I, I'm just done with talking about race now. I, it's going to upset someone anyway, no matter what I say, since some people don't really think about these things with any sense. I consider myself a very neutral person about race and culture. Like, I think I try to... I try to keep a level head about... What is tolerant, what is progressive, and what isn't. I think there's a point where that's the wrong spot should be two tasks to the right. There's a spot where you your altruism will be too much. And on that subject, there are also people whose altruism is fake. Enough about that. I don't, I don't really feel like going about on about this subject anymore. This tell about this two way.
Let's talk about gameplay, okay? This is always fun to talk about. And little bit comparison against... Not against, but between... PSP and... PC-98. Is that when you play the PC-98 version, I actually... When I first turned the camera, I thought RS was teleporting. I had no idea where he is. Like It felt like he just stepped like 10 steps to the left or something. It was really weird. But once, since the camera like it changes instantly, there's no transition like here. It's very disorient disorientating at first, but once you get used to it, it's it's very clear. You can use the minimap to kind of get the idea of how you are orientated and so forth. You get a good idea once you play the game enough, and that's like I think I got used to it in ten minutes. Controls were very weird, but I got used to them very fast. They are very intuitive for this kind of a game. And here we got these like the teleports are not instant, like it based in 98 version. You've got a little tile head that appears, which shows there's a teleportation spot, and you get this little transition animation, you so you know you are actually being warped around. <laughs> no such luck in the PC version. But I think the PC-98 version overall controls much better since animations are all instant. It's much... It flows much better in my opinion. It's... That's what makes it better to play. Everything here, the 3D animations have a wind-up. And as I said before, I think I said it before here, but I might be mistaken since I did two commentaries for this and one of them doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the controls are just more natural on the computer version. It's very hard to play this on a pad, really. Like, these controls work, but it's very hard to get used to. I guess it's very easy when you haven't played the computer version, but... Yeah. Maybe I should switch around the console so that uh, use the shoulder buttons to strafe and debat to turn around. That might be better. Yeah, it's the next floor. Check that to see if we got 100%. We are about done here. Got an ebony key. And that implies that there are monsters here. So yeah, that's gonna say. Wasn't a very exciting episode, but we had that fun puzzle, some talk about things. I'm trying to keep away from politics since I want to keep this channel kind of gaming only. Even though I just talk about movies too, but I have to keep it mild. Because when you talk about this stuff too much, it's going to cause a shitstorm and I don't want that. Enough of that in the Persona 4 Golden commentary section. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you'll continue watching and see you again. I actually forgot to save the game. I always showed myself saving the game, so... I thought it was important to do.